start off with what I'm going to be talking about. In the DLC of Nier Automata, there are three locations where you can access an arena challenge where you fight waves of enemies as a test of skill, which is a common fighting game tradition. Each of these locations have different levels of difficulty, with the most challenging one being appropriately called the Special Rank. The one in the forest region, for example, is this minigame where you remote control a robot to fight other robots, and the one in the desert is a race against the clock to defeat as many enemies as possible. It's all fine until the flooded city Colosseum introduces its own unique difficulty scaling. For comparison, rank S in the flooded city involves fighting against 4 waves of level 80 enemies, while special rank is 21 waves of level 130 enemies with four bosses in between. One of the problems with fighting higher level enemies is the fact that your health bar is purely cosmetic now. Every single attack is game over, and your attacks deal almost nothing in return. So the first mission will be getting to max level in order to minimize the level difference as much as possible. And to do this, we will travel to the Copit City during chapter 14, because this area now spawns infinite enemies. Changing the difficulty to easy to equip auto attack chips will let you AFK farm your level to max. Just don't forget to save after leaving. The next up is building the chipset. There are three types of chips. Defensive, offensive and supportive. Since the health bar doesn't exist, just completely forget about defense. There is a chip called damage absorb that gives you a chance to survive a hit, but if you are likely to get hit once, you are likely to get hit twice. Building a habit of not relying on RNG is the goal here. We filter out the following offensive chips because counters, charge and down attacks are really slow and ranged attacks do close to nothing. The following support chips can be used, which leaves us with these. The core chips of your build should be weapon attack up, taunt up, overclock and shockwave. The first two make you deal 10 times as much damage Overclock helps you process the dozens of enemies around you, and Shockwave prevents you from having to get right up in your face to attack. This leaves us room for one more chip. There's the option of going for fast cooldown or evade range up, but they aren't as good as dealing more damage, so it comes down to choosing between critical up or last stand. Now last stand will double your damage output, but only when you are low on health. And the only way to be low on health is if you self-destruct. The problem is that it makes the whole screen black and white, which may or may not bother you. If it doesn't bother you, this chip might be a better choice. Otherwise, the last slot goes to critical up. These chips can be bought and combined at the forest canyon entrance. If you are in need of money, then you can keep farming at the copied city. Unfortunately, to make these chips fit, overclock should not be upgraded past plus 6, and the weapon attack up chip has to be a diamond variant. The method for getting the diamond variant for this specific chip is loading chapter 1701, opening the locks on the sub towers and farming the enemies that spawn during the last lock. Once Popol and Devil are start becoming exhausted, you can go to the nearest access point to save and reload the chapter. Once you've gathered the chips, remember to only combine a diamond chip with another diamond chip, otherwise it becomes a normal variant. With regard to what weapons to choose, depends on the effects they have. If we look at every weapon in the game and their corresponding effect, four stand out from the rest in terms of damage output, which are attack speed up, critical plus, dark impulse and holy blessing. Considering that critical hits give a 4 times multiplier, it's safe to say it's pretty important. The critical plus effect is found on the weapon's Ancient Overlord, which also has a bullet rupture effect, and the Iron Pipe. You could also go with other weapons, but these are the recommended ones for optimizing damage output. One vital part of your arsenal will also include the pod programs. Most of them are either useless, have limited utility, or simply don't do any damage. So I'm just going to say that the aim shield and slow are going to be the two most vital programs in special rank. Before we go over on where to use them, there are a few settings that you should change. I recommend increasing the camera distance during combat by a few steps, because it will make seeing your surroundings a lot easier, especially when there are a bunch of projectiles flying at you from every direction. In terms of keybinds, two buttons should be bound to the flashlight. 
Due to the taunt up chips effect only activating on taunted enemies, the whole challenge has to be beaten while spamming the flashlight, because repeatedly turning the flashlight on and off in front of an enemy taunts them, which you can see from the smoke coming from their head. I recommend setting both of the left trigger buttons to the flashlight so that the left hand focuses on spamming and the other on evading. That is most of the preparations, but before you start the actual runs, there are a few differences in the character you choose. First of all, the difficulty compared to A2 is higher with 2B and even higher with 9S due to the fact that 9S cannot have two weapons due to his heavy attack being tied to hacking, making his attacks a lot slower. A2 has the highest damage output of the three due to the ability to go into Berserk mode. If you choose to play with A2, then in order to maintain Berserk mode, you need to switch out Critical Up to Offensive Healing to restore the damage caused by being in Berserk mode. Note that Offensive Healing works with Port Fire as well. Throughout Special Rank you can pretty much hold down Port Fire the whole time. There isn't really a time when Port Fire isn't useful at either stunning enemies or destroying projectiles. Also, to help remember the 21 different rounds in Special Rank, I recommend thinking of it as 4 different phases based on the mini-bosses. On the first round with A2, you can wait to trigger Overclock and position yourself in the middle of the first wave of enemies to activate Berserk mode. Otherwise, there isn't anything to look out for at the beginning, except for surprise launch attacks. Once the flyer units come down, try to be in position to kill one of them before they start moving. The enemies always spawn in the same location and one good way to remember where you are on the map is noticing that one side is darker than the other, and also using the drawbridge as an anchor point. To take down the flyers faster than running around, there's the option of using the shield and gathering them around you. After the flyer units are dead is when the first mini-boss, the Gestalt Goliath tank, appears in the middle of the arena. Regarding this boss and the ones that come after it, you want to take them down before they get to move, and for that you need to use the slow program just as they drop down. While they're kept in place, you just want to attack them as fast as possible. But with 9S, you have to perform a specific move only available to him. Jump, evade and instantly light attacking makes him stationary in the air while his sword spins in front of him for a moment. This is going to be his main method of taking down bosses. Take note that the sword spins slightly above him and the hitbox for bosses are usually a bit lower. Once you've taken down the tank, a horde of spiders will appear. They can shoot projectiles, lasers, lunge at you and start spinning. If you keep your distance, your biggest concern is just going to be watching out for one of them running at you. Switching to the missile part also lets you interrupt their attacks for a brief moment and there's also the option of using a shield. After round 7, you need to be prepared for a ring of kamikaze units. There are three ways of handling this round. Using the P shield, using the slow, or quickly killing one of them, then continuing to run in a circle, using the laser pod fire to get rid of the rest. Once the last one is gone, four small spheres will drop down on the darker side. Once they start shooting, it's hard to find an opening, so a shield is a wise option here. Then after the two goliaths are killed, two spiders will spawn in the middle in addition to four towers in the corners. After this round is the second mini boss, Gestalt Simone, and just like before, you need to slow it down when it spawns. The spawn location for this one is on the brighter side of the map, right in front of the drawbridge. If you are dealing less damage than you should, it is probably because the lower part of her body has armor before she becomes taunted. Either attack the upper portion first, or make sure the flashlight is directed a bit upward. The Gestalt Goliath that spawns after doesn't behave any differently, it just has more health than the normal versions. 
After this is a long round with armored stubbies that are accompanied by two kamikaze units that drop at the beginning and two that drop at some point later. You need to be aware of this the whole time since it is easy to get caught off guard by them running at you. After this round is over, two medium flyers will drop accompanied by a reverse jointed goliath. A good rule to remember here is to stay at the sides to avoid being pincered. Now the round that follows this one has an armored electric goliath drop down at the middle. An important thing about these enemies is that their electric armor has a very large hitbox. They can be destroyed with pod fire, but better avoid them entirely and go for their back. Next up are a bunch of various small enemies. The most dangerous ones are the quadrupeds that can suddenly run at you. Once the enemies are gone, the third boss fight Gestalt Koroshi drops down in front of the player. And again, the slow program will keep it at bay long enough to kill it. In the event you don't have enough time to defeat it, then survival becomes a matter of improvisation. The boss can also spawn minions that come at you from behind while you are attacking it. The next rounds feature a few flyers and a bunch of small stubbies that aren't intimidating, but keep in mind that every single projectile is life-threatening. Round 18 drops 4 goliaths where 2 of them are the electric variant. Stand in the middle of them with a fully charged slow and then quickly go kill one of them from behind. Remember that the electric armor has a hitbox that persists even after death and walking near it means death. This round is followed by 3 spiders dropping in the middle with 2 reverse jointed goliaths at the sides. You have the option of going for the spiders first, but you'll be in the crossfire of the other two enemies, which is why I prefer to stay at the side. Once this round is over, you have arrived at the final boss, Gestalt Adam and Eve, which is simultaneously the easiest and the hardest boss in the game. While their attacks are simple to evade, their difficulty comes from their wide arsenal and how unpredictable they can be. The overview of their attacks looks like this. They have three common gap closers, which is dashing at you, teleporting next to you either once or with flurry attacks. They have really fast melee attacks that are hard to look out for and a large amount of different projectiles. Common ones to look out for are double handed forward throws, which has a predictable wind up animation, spinning around with both arms where it's possible to evade several times, and over the head throws. There is also a really fast projectile attack with a no wind up animation. It is vital that you build a habit out of evading into the attack instead of away, because evading gives you about a half a second of invulnerability, which is wasted if it is spent traveling away from the projectile but still getting hit by it. As for dealing damage, they often activate shields as soon as you hit them. Hitting the shield enough breaks it and triggers an instant attack. There are two types of shields, ranged and melee. If the ranged shield broke, then they launch a bunch of projectiles. If it was the melee shield that broke, then they instantly attack in front of them. Now if you didn't have overclock, what you do is launch them in the air after evading and attacking them as long as you can. But with overclock, you can attack them during any evade and they can't activate their shields. Which means you don't need to think about breaking them. There is also the chance that while you are focusing on breaking a shield, there is a projectile flying at you off screen, although most of the time the other one does wait for their turn. They share a health bar and once you've killed one of them, the remaining chest off may or may not summon two clones. These clones aren't very aggressive, have less health and the same attack patterns. Killing the clones isn't required to win, but it isn't very hard to do so. Overall, the main strategy against them is going to be evading the trigger overclock by dodging into the dash or into projectiles. But if you're feeling confident, then going right in their face to break shields works too. It's just going to be harder to predict their attack patterns. The expected completion time should be between 5 to 10 minutes for A2 and around 8 to 15 for 2B and 9S. The reward for beating special rank isn't really anything noteworthy, but completing it was always about showing the community how something seemingly impossible can be overcome by simply never staying down. Learning something new and passing it on to the future players. And now that I've told you everything I know about special rank, anything you would like to say to other players.
who are suffering because they cannot finish near automata? Thank you.